Hello and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this white cat in Procreate. Before I show you the video, I just want to have a quick word about the types of brushes you will need to paint this cat. Number one, a wet streaky brush. Something like the turpentine brush that will allow you to push and pull the paint around. The streaky effect of the brush will allow you to lay transparent paint on transparent paint. You can also try the old brush or oil paint. Number two, a dry textured brush. Something like the stucco brush will give you a lot of texture and the Nico Rull will give you a little less texture. Number three, a heavily loaded paintbrush. I have downloaded a couple from Photoshop. These are the oil rich brush and the scratch bristle. They will give you a very heavy application of paint without much pressure. An equivalent in Procreate would be the Terra Lea brush found in the artistic section. Number four, a pencil. I use the Derwent in the sketching section. I have experimented with many different brushes and I have found there is no one brush that will enable you to paint like a fine artist in Procreate. You'll need a variety of brushes that all make different marks and have different transparencies. So let's get into the video and I will talk about my process as I go along. I chose pink for the background because I wanted to create a compositional diagonal of pink. Pink ear, pink nose and pink lower background. This gives the painting balance. I have also balanced out the dark of the eyes with a horizontal dark section along the top area. I introduce the stripes to create interest in the background and also to emphasise the shape of the area. It is a long narrow rectangle. It is very simple to draw straight lines. Just hold your pencil tool on the screen and it will automatically straighten any line you draw. The area of the cat is a much fatter rectangle, so immediately I have created contrast between these two areas. Contrast is good and we should always be aiming for as much contrast in our art as possible. In order to make sure these two areas did not compete, I had to use a narrow value range for my stripes. In fact, there is not a huge contrast between the cat and the pink background. They are quite close in value. The contrast is in the temperature, cool and warm. I have used orange greys in the shadows for my cat's fur and green blue greys in the lighter areas. Remember the rule, cool light equals warm shadows. The light in my reference photo is cool, therefore my shadows will be warm. I can select a dark grey from anywhere in my red, orange, yellow or green, yellow colour panel and it will work in the shadows. As long as I select my lighter colours from the green, blue, blue or blue, purple colour panels. Remember that your iPad screen is backlit. You may therefore need to adjust your screen to half brightness to ensure the artwork does not print too dark. The backlit screen will automatically skew your colours. It will make your whites appear warmer than they are. I therefore work screen to screen. I have my reference photo on a laptop or phone and will work directly into Procreate. I do not print out any images. At least this way, all my images are equally affected by screen light and I am trying to minimise any colour shift I may get when I eventually print out the artwork. It is actually quite hard to get that fluffy effect on the cat. I used multiple brushes to achieve this effect. Often, I find it easiest to start with the eyes and the nose so that they can act as an anchor point for the rest of the painting. I started off with the wet brushes on half opacity to block in the areas. I will then use a brush like the oil rich brush that puts down a lot of paint to fill in the detail. I will add texture to the paint with my stucco brush. So within any area I use three different marks, a wet loose stroke, a thicker more painterly stroke and a textured stroke. The idea is to allow the different strokes to show through throughout the painting and this will give it interest. 
I will then perhaps go over various parts of the cat's fur with my wet brushes, like the turpentine brush, and pull and push various parts around. I will be trying to pull my dark tones into my mid-tones and my mid-tones into my light tones. If I think I have too much of one brush going on, I will add a few strokes of a different brush to break up the brushwork. As the painting progresses, the brushwork gets easier because I have figured out my value and my temperature. So I am just using the colour picker by pressing and holding my finger on the iPad and then rotating through my brushes, laying different marks to add variety to the brushwork. In order, I would say figure out your value first, then adjust your temperatures, then sort out your brushwork. For the background, I have used a wet brush, drawn my straight lines by holding my pen tool on the iPad. I've then just filled them in. I've used larger wet brushes to add texture in the area around the cat's ear. The whiskers have been done with a pencil tool and I find it best to suggest these by scribbling them in. The artwork has been painted across 17 layers. I will always do the background on its own layer. I will also do the eyes and nose on their own layer. Other than that, there is no real order to how I use the layers. If I have done an area that I like, I then move on to a new layer as it's easier to disregard anything that I subsequently do not like. I also have a very basic outline of my cat on the very top layer, which I use to check my drawing is correct throughout the painting. Lastly, I just wanted to briefly mention edges. These are very important to creating a piece of artwork that looks painterly. You need a mix of hard edges and soft edges. Here I have hard edges around my cat's eyes, nose and for the whiskers. Everything else is soft. As a rule, keep your harder edges in your area of interest. That is where you want your viewer to first look and focus on. Keep everything else softer to varying degrees especially the transition between the object and its background. My hardest area was describing this edge. You'll see from the time-lapse video, it took me multiple attempts to get it right. I needed additional brush marks to extend the fur out into the background. I have textured up my background here and here in an attempt to integrate the cat into its background. Had I had a hard edge here, coupled with hard edges on my stripes, then this would have competed for my viewer's attention. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and found it useful. Please like and subscribe if you can and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find examples of my work and also details of online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.